Welcome to Digital Asset News Clips, where we take the advancements in crypto and digital assets and bring it on to bite-sized pieces. Today, just the thumbnail suggests, will WonderFi be able to bridge the gap and bring even your grandma into DeFi? So to do that, we're going to take a look at everything that has to do with WonderFi and just to uh, go over some things, we're going to talk about why this is actually important, uh, the four things it actually does, the release date, and then we're going to take a look at the investor deck, which is everything we really need to know about this project. So before we get started, I need to make mention of one thing. There is no token for WonderFi. There's no WonderFi token. There's no tokenomics. There's nothing like that to, to, get, to get excited about. So the question you might ask yourself is, why are we doing this video? Why do we even care about what's going on with an app, uh, another app that uh, gets into the DeFi space? And the thing I want to tell you is this. It's important that we get these types of services into the masses because we need to make it simple. So it, if you're into little DeFi projects uh, like uh, like Compound and Aave and Ethereum and Solana, then you might want to stick around because this might actually be a little bit important. So that takes care of the first part. Let's dive into why WonderFi and what is this? What are they trying to accomplish? Which is the big thing. So this is the website itself, and it just breaks down to your gateway to DeFi. Before I even get going, I want you to just to just understand this. This is what they are trying to do in a nutshell. What this is, is the adoption curve. And what they're trying to do is get as many people in here as we possibly can, okay? So we know there's a chasm between people like us who get into it super early and people who are just trying to adopt, which is might be the early majority or late majority or laggard. So I call this really the grandma test. If I can make something so simple that your grandma can use it, then the early majority, late majority, and probably your grandma on the laggards will gobble this up and start to use it uh, quickly and easily. So when we go over all these things, I know there are certain things that you know that you can do to make DeFi work for you. But you have to understand, you are probably super advanced if you're in this video right now. You are a super, you're either an innovator or a super early adopter. We can't get too far just on that. We need to bring the whole world into our space. And to do that, we got to simplify some things. And this is why this is what WonderFi is doing. So just when we're going through these things, just think about those things. Don't say like, well, I can only do that. I can do that. Yes, you can. But can your grandma? So let's talk about the four things this project actually does to make this thing work. So first of all, again, simplify gateway to DeFi. Let me blow this up so you can see it. Here's the four things it does. Savings. And again, if you're in traditional finance, you have a bank account, never even heard of crypto, or maybe you heard of crypto, have no idea what, uh, what it is and how to get started. This is a godsend because you're talking about you can do savings, earn significantly higher interest on your assets than you will with a traditional savings account because let's be honest, 0.02% is not going to get you to retirement. Savings products are backed by Compound Finance. Again, you can go to Compound, but people don't really know that it's very hard for them. Also, uh, automate your portfolio. Again, index funds power public equities, and that's really what drives the market. If people who don't know uh, a lick about fundamental analysis or technical analysis can go, you know what, just give me a fund. And it's the same thing with crypto, and that's what I think will power the next generation. And they say DeFi indexes let you own the assets powering DeFi. Great, they can pick and choose for you, put a basket, make it super simple. Uh, swap, you can buy and sell digital assets in just a few clicks, which we all have that avail availability, right? We have it on Gemini, we have it on Voyager, we have it on Coinbase, we have it on Binance, of course, right? But they're making it all together and all in one platform and super easy for the average. Lend digital assets, compound your wealth. Lending your digital asset holdings via compound finance. Uh, interest, to, and this is interesting, interest accrues every 15 seconds so you can sit back, relax, and watch your assets grow in real time. So imagine you're just getting into crypto and you have this app and you're looking at the all the numbers and going, wow, Every 15 seconds, uh, I'm gaining money but doing absolutely nothing. And not 0.02%, 4%, 5%, whatever else it is uh, that they do because they're doing aggregates of DeFi. So that's, in a nutshell, uh, what it does in the four things. But here's the problem. And as we scroll down, it's not really a problem. It's just what it is right now. See where it says Get Started? If you click on Get Started and go to Download the App Store and you go over here, it's going to say Coming Soon. Sign up right now. So right now, if you are wondering like, well, when is this actually gonna be available? Here's when it's gonna be available. The WonderFry app will be released on desktop on January 25th, 2022 with the mobile app release to follow. So again, in your head, think to yourself, who would probably benefit from a desktop version versus a mobile version? 
I will leave that up to you. And that's probably your demographic. So that is the four things. That is the release date. And then if we take a look, let's get just break it down and get into the investor deck. And the investor deck is pretty long over here, excuse me. The investor deck is pretty long. And in all honesty, uh, if we go through it st start to finish, it's 33 pages, not, not terribly complex, but it's actually read better by going in reverse. So that's what I'm going to do. So just so you know, Wonderfy, you can't, there's no token for it. However, there, if you're into stocks, you know, maybe you want to look into the Wonderfy stock. And the ticker over here is WNDR. It's on the Canadian Exchange, which is on NEO. And you can check it out. It's done pretty well, actually. Uh, gosh, this is over, let's see, year to date. It's one from about a dollar, buck fifty or so, all the way up to its all time high around three dollars and kind of came back, but still doing pretty good. So if you're into uh, typical traditional equities, maybe check that out. The, I am, this is just financial opinion, not financial advice. Uh, I am not a financial advisor. And then also, uh, that is that part. Let's scroll up, share ownership. This is the big thing. On this channel, I talk about, there's really three things that I find important for any project. It's the UTT, uh, it's the utility, which what does it do? We talked about that. It is a tokenomics, we kind of saw a little bit about that. There's no one tokenomics, it's not, a, it's not a token. But then we also take a look at the team. And the team behind it is what makes it powerful, what makes it actually run, what makes it actually work. So if we take a look at the team here, I mean, they've got a pretty stacked team as far as like heavy for developers, not a bunch of marketers, because, you know, it's good to have the developers actually make this thing run. If we take a look at the investors, there's Kevin O'Leary. And there's a, a guy named Sam Bankman Free. You may know him from the CEO of FTX, and he is huge on Solana. Josh Richards and Leonard Latchman, great. So when we start to go through this, you're gonna see a common theme about Solana. And that's why it's kind of important to take a look and connect the dots into what the different underlying assets are that maybe you should take a really deep look into as far as adding to your portfolio. Anyhow, so let me blow this up so you can see it. We've got uh, Mark Bins and 25 plus years of experience, uh, business to business, B B2C, types like that. You got Sean Clark, Canada's first uh, fully regulated crypto investment firm, Stephanie Lee. Now this is interesting. She is currently the chief financial officer CFO at Cielo Waste Solutions, the fastest growing ESG companies in North America, ESG, environmental, social, and governance. And if you've followed Kevin O'Leary any length of time, you know, he's big into ESG and that's why he had to take a step back from Bitcoin a little bit because he's worried about the environmental impact. So it's amazing, actually pretty smart, that he got somebody here named Stephanie Lee, who is actually uh, the CFO at one of the biggest solutions for ESG compliance. Previously served in a leadership role at Northview Apartment REIT, Toronto Stock Exchange. So great, uh, sounds pretty good. Now CTO, you got Kong. And one more thing you're gonna notice is that people congregate around people. Meaning that if you have somebody who's been in an industry which worked out pretty well, usually you kind of like those people and you go in for them because you're like, hey, I trust this guy, I know what they can do or gal, and we're gonna keep partnering up and do things. You're gonna notice there's this thing called Galaxy Digital. Well, Kong Lee, management positions at Hootsuite, director of tech at FirstCoin Capital, acquired by Galaxy Digital, research and distributed computing, computing extensive published in major ACM. Uh, Kartik Bajaj, nailed it. Uh, key engineering role in companies like Amazon, Salesforce, and Hootsuite. First engineer at FirstCoin Capital, which was better acquired by Galaxy Digital. Dean, uh, supported and advised a number of companies. First Bitcoin mining company, list on the London Stock Exchange. And they got Ben, who's the CEO and director. And guess what? Formerly an executive officer at FirstCoin Capital, crypto startup acquired by Galaxy Digital. And also he is a uh, securities, or former, <laughs> he calls it a recovering securities lawyer. So that's a pretty solid team right there if you want to actually build things. Then moving up, Here's their strategy. And I found this fascinating and how they're gonna do things in a non-organic way. So like, look, we're gonna be big and we're gonna raise a bunch of capital and we're just gonna buy everything around us. That's what I see. Illustrative target examples. Wonder has developed a pipeline of acquisition targets to advance the DeFi sector. So here's who they target that they're gonna buy up, which is a smart idea. And this is what I see is going in the crypto market right now. You don't have time 
to build things from scratch. So if you have money, you're just gonna say, did you build that? That works out pretty well. I'm gonna acquire that and absorb that into my company and we're going to scale quickly. That means a licensed crypto exchange, payment processors, think, I mean, PayPal and Stripe are payment processors, but they're not gonna acquire them. Uh, Web3 wallets, financial products, and staking infrastructure companies because they are gonna offer staking. So it's not, not staking for their token, but staking for their, their DeFi tokens. Again, Solana, pretty big thing they're, they're, they're building on or talking about. The native token of Solana, a decentralized computing platform that rivals Ethereum. And they talk about the different crypto that they're gonna get into as far as DeFi. Uh, again, here is the uh, ticker for uh, their stock. And again, think of the mentality of who they are going for and the people that are reading this. Traditional finance players, people that are used to traditional things like ETFs, uh, like doing things with stocks, they're going to see this and go, huh, unlike ETFs, WonderFi has the ability to stake digital assets and generate yield using a variety of strategies available within the DeFi ecosystem. Well, great. I can't do that with my ETF. That sounds good. I'm going to look into that. Then moving up, here's the value propositions. There's really four things I see. Uh, here's the problem in DeFi. You got a lack of liquidity. Look, Mark Cuban even got rug pulled on Iron Finance. Problems with liquidity, right? So they like, well, there's a lack there. How do you fix that? Well, with WonderFi, it's going to be an aggregation of decentralized exchanges, provides deeper liquidity than individual protocols. I never liked the whole getting into one protocol. Just spread it all around. Locating the best pricing. Automatically source best pricing across multiple protocols and can split orders. So we see that in different projects that are brokerages like Voyager, where they can take a look at all the exchanges and go, this is a, a better price. Give us this price. We're gonna we're gonna get a little bit of, uh, of um, price, not a price appreciation, but a little bit of the piece of the pie as far as the spread. And that's what we're gonna make our money on. So it's the same thing here, but in the DeFi aspect. And actually, if you take a look over at CoinGecko, just for reference, to take a look at all the different DeFi products, you can you can click on categories on CoinGecko, come down here to number seven, decentralized finance. These are all the DeFi plays out there. And so Terra's one, but Chainlink's not really a DeFi play. It's actually an Oracle and it brings in uh, outside data, real world data in the blockchain. So not really, but it, it kind of gets in there. Uniswap, Seeth, Magic Internet Money. <laughs> Gra Graph isn't really DeFi. It's again, pulling in data. Aave, PancakeSwap, Loopering, Amp, Maker, Compound, Convex, Spell, all this thing, Sushi Swap, Synthetics Network Token. So if you take a look at all those things that are out there, wouldn't it be great to kind of take a look and which one has the best yield and I can get from there. And again, of course, you're gonna tell me, but Rob, I already know how to do that. I can go through all the ones and there's different programs and things that I can use. Yes, you can, because you're super advanced. But remember, does it pass the grandma test? Can your grandma go, well, I'm gonna go to Compound or I'm gonna go to this, I'm gonna go to Synthetics, I'm gonna find the best, the best uh, yield. No, this is what we need, just a little bit simplicity. So finishing up, taking a look, uh, Fiat on-ramp and off-ramp, they're gonna integrate with a centralized exchange like we talked about, and then compliance, AML integration, tax filing and reporting integration. So again, if you are a traditional player and you're thinking to yourself, I need something that is compliant because I'm not gonna get mixed up into some crazy uh, DeFi play, which doesn't have, that's gonna protect my assets. And that's why, for documents on WonderFi, Kevin O'Leary and his team are pretty big at getting the um, the right legalities in order. Now you can read all this, but I wanted this video to be under three hours, so I'm not gonna go over those. You can read them at your leisure. Uh, to go up, finishing Solana again here, going up, up. DeFi is overwhelming, sure, uh, which we talked about. Market opportunity, remember, the global financial services market is 22 and a half trillion. You know what the DeFi market is? 128 billion. Adults with bank or, or accounts in 2018, 3.8 billion. You know how many ETH addresses with DeFi protocols? 2.9. So do you think there's an opportunity? I think there is. And then lastly, again, crossing the chasm. This is, again, the grandma test, and can we reach that? Well, we can if we make things as simple as possible. So that is WonderFi in a nutshell. It'd be interesting to see what's going to happen in January 22nd when this app comes to light. But I, for one, am just glad that there's something else out there to make things simplified. 
the people that just don't get DeFi. Anyhow, that's it for today. So uh, if you liked the video, found a little value, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about on this channel are more of the advanced things that are going on in crypto and digital assets. If you're looking for just the news, follow me over at Digital Asset News Regular, over 300,000 subscribers, all that great stuff. And we do those videos every single day. That's it for today. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.